Welcome to another video tutorial about MaxQDA, your software for qualitative and mixed methods research. Today we'll get to know MaxDictio, the module for text exploration and dictionary-based analysis, available in MaxQDA Plus and MaxQDA Analytics Pro. MaxDictio offers three main tools – analysis of word frequencies and word combinations, analysis of a keyword in context, or QUIC, and quantitative content analysis with a dictionary. In this short video, we'll get to know these features by snooping around the Sherlock Holmes stories in regard to gender descriptions. An essential part of MaxDictio is to calculate and analyze frequencies of single words or entire word combinations. Let's start our Sherlock Holmes adventure by looking at the most frequently used word combinations in both the novels and short stories. Up here, I can decide how many words my word combinations should consist of. This number can range from 2 to 5. On the left, I select which part of my data I want to analyze. I can choose all documents or limit the analysis to activated documents or the content from the Retrieved Segments window. On the right, I can decide to display additional information for single documents, document groups, or for codes. I'll select to count each document group separately, so that I can compare frequencies in short stories and novels. Additionally, I could use a stop list, which is a list of all the words that MaxDictio should ignore. You can download standard stop lists from our website, or create and fill them in yourself. If you're working on more than one MaxQDA project, save a stop list as global so that you can access it in all of your projects. Lemmatization is a very useful option if you want to summarize all words that stem from the same base form. So, if you activate this option, the words going, went and gone will all be summarized under the term go. Let's have a look at the result table. These columns contain information about each word combination. We can see how many words there are in each combination, how often they occur, their subsequent rank, and in how many of the analyzed documents a word combination appears. The two columns in the back split up the frequencies for short stories and novels. For example, the combination The Adventure of the appears 45 times in total, 44 times in short stories, but only one time in novels. By using these three buttons over here, I can display additional information for my document groups. I can see in how many documents this combination appears, or the rank that a combination holds within each document group. If I decide to limit the display to the 10 most frequently used combinations, then this rank will also only be calculated on the basis of those 10 words. Hover over an entry with the mouse cursor to view all the variations of a combination. To ignore a word combination in the future, double-click on the icon in the first column or select multiple items by holding down the Shift key and exclude them with this stop symbol right here. To recalculate the frequencies, click the Refresh button over here. Now those entries are gone. Stop lists can also be edited by opening them from the menu and removing or adding an entry. Let's snoop around our results to find some clues that touch on the topic of Sherlock Holmes and gender. I can already see that men appear up here, but there's no sign of a word combination that includes women. To investigate further, I'll filter the column Word Combination to display only combinations that contain either man or woman.
Now, even with the active filter, it's still all about men. To take a closer look at entries about women, I display each finding here. And since the result table is interactive, I can click on an entry to display the original source in the document browser. I can then also code my findings with a new or existing code for further analysis. As usual, I can set the weight of the newly coded segments and define how many of the surrounding words, sentences or paragraphs will be coded. Let's take a step back and look at the overall word frequencies. The options here are almost identical to the ones before, so I'll skip right to the results. Here are the most frequently used words in our material. We see immediately that, with the stop list applied, man is the second most used word of all, and appears over 2,000 times. To quickly find the word woman, I click on the word column and enter woman on my keyboard. We can see that woman occurs much less often, 340 times, and has the rank 85. Now let's investigate the qualitative dimension, or in other words, the meaning those words derive from the different contexts in which they appear. There are two features in Max Dictio that allow us to investigate the context of words. The first one is called Keyword in Context. Here I can select how much context to display. After I click on OK, all the words in my category are displayed in a well-arranged table, including the text before and after the word itself. This makes going through the results and selecting which findings to code for later a breeze. And now to one of my favorite tools of all time, the interactive word tree. It's an interactive word map that displays word combinations in their context like a tree branching out. Let's analyze the novels. On the left of the word tree is the most frequently used word, the, which is currently set as the so-called root word. From this root word, we see the most frequent word combinations branch out. The word that follows most frequently on the is man, and the words that follow most frequently on the man are who and was. The right side column shows the context of any selected sentence. This number up here shows how many branches are currently displayed, while the number in brackets tells me that there are more than 11,000 branches in total. Clicking on man shows that the combination the man occurs 146 times. The combination the man who occurs 25 times. Hold down the alt key and click on any word in the tree or in the right hand column to set that word as the new root. or enter a new root word in the search field here. The tree can be set to display all word combinations following a root word, leading up to the root word, or both. Could it be possible that the author simply used other words when speaking of woman? For example, lady, or daughter, or wife? Let's find out. For this task, I'll use the Max Dictio dictionary features. I can create my own categories of words for further analysis. I create one category for gender female and one for gender male, and enter different words that could describe men and women into each category. Let's fast forward a bit. I've created a few more categories like people or science. For my current analysis, however, 
I don't want to take them into account. So what I do is double-click on the folder symbols to exclude them from the next dictionary-based analysis. Now let's check the frequencies of the dictionary words. To make this even more interesting, I've defined the publication date as a document variable and created two sets for the early and late Doyle. This information will be displayed in additional columns. Generally speaking, we see that many words that implicate a male gender are much more frequent than their female counterparts. In contrast to this, the word wife appears much more often than the word husband. We can also compare the frequencies of the entire categories by clicking on this menu entry. Here is how many times any of the words from each dictionary category appear in each document. I can change the view to display row percentages and now clearly see that words of men I entered appear much more frequently than those of women. You can also visualize this table with the Category Matrix browser. This feature works in a very similar way to the Code Matrix browser, so I recommend watching the Code Matrix video tutorial if you want to learn more about this feature. We have already established that there is a difference in frequency in the mention of men and women. To look into this more closely in the form of qualitative analysis, we could store our results by coding them with the dictionary categories and retrieve the segments later for further coding. I hope you enjoyed this tour through the works of Sherlock Holmes and got some insight into the extensive functionality of Max Dictio. Happy analyzing!